everyone for coming out. Um, basically today we're just going to talk about everything to do with student housing. Uh, most of you guys are in first year, so I'm going to do my best to try and get you guys as informed as possible. So that um, next year when you guys start looking for a place, wherever it may be, maybe a house or apartment or what company you want to go for, at least you know what's out there and what to look for. Um, the biggest thing is like, if you look at how much money you're going to spend on rent for the next like 3-4 years, maybe 5 years, you end up spending like over well over like twenty thousand dollars. So it's really, really important that you make sure you know where your money's going to and you make the most of it. The worst thing you want is to move into a place that maybe you got scammed into or it's not what you were promised, and then your entire living experience while you're trying to focus on school is ruined. So today we're gonna to talk about student housing basics, uh, ways to find your ideal home, your rights once you're a tenant. Uh, the resources that are available to you everywhere, and then we'll just end with uh, questions and answers. So for me, I came up with a four-step process. If you guys follow these four steps, it'll be really easy for you guys to find a house next year and really make sure that you know find the right fit. So, like show of hands, who knows what subletting is here and like guarantor forms and anything like that. Okay, so most of the first years don't know. So you need to learn what these things are because when you go to sign a place. They're going to ask you to sign a lease. They're going to ask you for a guarantor. A guarantor is someone who's going to basically back up your claim that you're going to pay your rent. So kind of like um, if I uh, sign an agreement with uh, Alicia and she says, okay, I'm going to pay X number of dollars every month. And it's been like three months now and she hasn't paid her rent. Then I'm not going to go after her. I'm going to go after her guarantor, which is really like an older sibling or a parent or an aunt and an uncle. And they usually ask for them to be like a Canadian citizen. Um, just so that it's a lot easier for them to get into contact with them and whatnot. Uh, you also have to know like what kind of lease you're signing, how long the term is. A lot of the times with most like the management companies in Waterloo, you'll sign a lease and they'll have a clause in the lease saying that you have till this specific date to terminate for next year or you automatically renew you want. And they're allowed to do that. So a lot of the times people, um, people come uh, into the office and they're like, uh, I'm getting emails saying that I owe you guys rent and then I'm signed on for a new year and stuff, but I don't want to live there, I got cancelled. But they never actually told us. So, for example, if you start your lease in September, you usually have to tell them by December if you're going to terminate your lease for the next following year. And they do that because they want to know exactly what rooms are available to rent out to new students. And if you don't do that, they automatically sign you on because of the lease you originally signed, and then you're stuck in that place whether you want it or not. Okay. Um, I keep referring to the office, I work at Doma Student Housing, it's Waterloo's largest uh, student housing company in Waterloo. They have like about 15 houses and two, uh, sorry, 15 apartment buildings and 200 houses. So I've been working there for a year and I still work there today. So everything I learned from there and uh, other things I'm going to try and talk about today. Um, subletting is a really big thing in Waterloo, basically, basically because most students don't study for three terms straight. They either go back home or they go on co-op or they have an off term, whatever it may be. So it's really important that you find someone to take your room. So the whole process of finding someone to rent your room temporarily while you're not there is a process of subletting. So for example, most of you first years, the way it works is you're in school from September to April, right? And then come uh, uh, May till August, you probably have an off break. So if you were in uh, student housing, then what's the point of paying five, $600 a month for a room that you're not even using while you're at home? So it's important to find a sublet who is looking for housing, whether they're on co-op or they have a different stream than you, and they'll pay you the rent to live in your place. And it's a long process, but it's really important because what's the point of losing $3,000, $4,000 while you're not even there? So we'll go into subletting a little bit more later. Um, and the next is uh, deciding your needs. So it's really important you focus on what you're looking for. So are you looking for price? Are you looking for location? Are you looking for a one bedroom, two bedroom, five bedroom, etc.? So um, it's really important that if you have the opportunity to live with people that you trust and live with people that you're comfortable with, that you take advantage of that. Um, a lot of the times I notice that people live with randoms and a lot, of, a lot of confusion, a lot of problems because you might have like different standards of like cleanliness or like different procedures. They might party till 3 a.m. You might not want to do that. And you can't, con you can't really control what they do. Um, you should know that it's really important to know like what bus uh, routes are around you, like grocery stores, how far the walk is, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the next, you need to decide whether you want to do an apartment or in house. Uh, there's a really big difference. With houses, you're usually looking at um, a cheaper rent price 
um, just because they're not always as nice as the apartments, and the security tends to be a lot um, lower. Another thing too is like a lot of the houses in Waterloo are a lot, a lot more run down because people have stopped developing houses and they're developing buildings. Like you can see all the construction everywhere. Um, with apartments, you usually have added security. Um, utilities are usually not included. You have to pay extra for things like parking and stuff. Whereas houses, you have a lot more common area space. You have a lot more uh, bigger rooms and stuff. But then you might need to take things, take, uh, take things like uh, you might have to shovel the snow. You might be in charge of cutting the grass and all that kind of stuff. So it's really important you know exactly what you're getting from from each um, side. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's really it's a lot easier to sublet apartments than it is houses because apartments are usually more well known and they're more well kept and security is a big thing for subletters because they don't really know you, they're just trusting you. So they really want to know that no one has access to their rooms and um, if they have a problem like there's a leak or something, that there's someone to there to take uh, care of it. The last thing you need to take into consideration, yeah, what's up? Um, for uh, a lot of people usually say that, that when you have to sublet a house or an apartment, yeah. you have to charge lesser for it. Is that always true or can you still charge <coughs> Um, for that, I'd say it depends on the on the term. A lot of times, like fall is the most expensive term for rent, followed by winter, and then summer is really uh, cheap because like it, it's it, it's really common sense because summer there's not many students and there's so many empty rooms, right? So they're 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 willing to lease it out for little to nothing, right? Like I've seen people get Lux and Sage for like, and we'll get to that later. But Lux and Sage are like two premium buildings in Waterloo. They're usually like regular price, like seven, seven fifty upwards, and people are renting them out for like three fifty, four hundred dollars in the summer. So there's a huge difference, right? And in the fall, like it's really hard to find cheap housing because they know that the demand is there, and that's usually when people sign their leases and stuff. So there's not really many people looking for sublets, right? And it's really important that if you're gonna rent out a place, um, what I recommend is if you have a house for like five hundred dollars, okay and you find a much nicer apartment that's much closer for 550. And the only difference between the two for you is the $50 price. If, if you think that you're not gonna be able to sublet that house, then always go with the better option. Because that extra $50 over eight months will be, what, $200, right? Extra you're paying in rent. Sorry, yeah, okay, $400 extra you're paying in rent, okay? But then come summer, let's say that house for $500, you're not able to sublet it at all or you get maybe like $300 a month for it, right? While you're not living there, you lose $800 that one term that you're not there, right? As opposed to your apartment, that might be a lot easier to sublet, you'll actually save money in the long run, okay? Because most people, when they sublet, they look for like brand name buildings or companies that they know. That way they know if there's a problem or something, they don't have to come deal with you because you're not really gonna help them. If you're gonna be gone doing God knows what, on co-op, whatever, you don't have to worry about that. You want them to just move in and then get your rent money and that's it, okay? Uh, and then the last thing you have to take into consideration is like private landlords or management companies. So in Waterloo, you can either sign a house with like one individual landlord who has like one or two or three houses and they'll like help you. They'll rent, they'll sign the lease between you. If something breaks or your heating stops or whatever it may be, they'll be the ones to come help you. But then there's management companies where you often pay a little bit more, but they have like a maintenance team, they have like a leasing team, they have security on site and a bunch of other things. So Especially with parents who are worried or international students who might not have like the contacts here for them to help in case of emergencies, it's a huge bonus to have like 24-hour emergencies. Like I know Domus, KW, Ferrand, Atlas, all these property management groups, they have like a line that like 3 a.m. like your internet cuts and you have an assignment the next day, you can call them and they'll try and help you and reconnect it and do whatever they can. As opposed to a private landlord who might not even live in Waterloo and might live like two, three hours away, it's much more rare that they'll be able to help you right away and take care of you the way you should be taken care of. So when you're finding, your, well, we talked about accessibility. You want to be like walking distance. You want to know what bus routes are around. Um, you want to basically know that like you're late to class, you'll be able to get there. You'll be able to get to the grocery stores. Like you don't want to live like 30, 40 minute commute from um, campus because it's just not doable and it's not reasonable. Um, the next, you want to know what your inclusions are. So by that, I mean, you want to know, like, when you're signing your lease, is hydro included, is internet included, how do utilities work, is laundry included, or is it extra, and all that kind of stuff. So, for example, most property management groups, they'll have uh, their own hydro program, where they'll tell you, okay, pay, like, a set fee ahead of time, and they'll take care of signing up hydro for you through the city of Waterloo. 
So they, they do that. They'll pay your bills for you and everything, but you're paying $25 a month every single time. It's usually, in, my, in, in all the situations I've seen, it usually never ever gets to that amount of money that you're paying them to begin with. So they make money off the hydro plans because they're taking the time to phone hydro, set up your account, pay your bills on time for you and whatever. My recommendation is, especially if you're living with people you know, it's literally two seconds to call Waterloo North Hydro, say, hi, I just moved into the, my, this place. This is my name, this is my contact information. Can I get hydro? Right away, they'll turn it on for you. Your first bill comes, they'll make you put a deposit on. And then every time the bills come, just split it amongst your roommates. It's a lot cheaper. And even with these hydro plans, if you go above the $25, they'll charge you an extra fee for going over. So the only benefit to signing up for all these hydro plans is that you don't have to make that phone call. You don't have to knock on your roommate's door and ask them to split the rent for you. That's the only benefit of that. So if you're living with uh, you know, people you might not know or people you might not trust, then yeah, sure, I'd recommend it because you don't want to be the one who signs up for Hydro and it'll be on your name and then they don't pay you. But if you're living with people you know, people you trust, living with maybe one or two other people, it's always better to just sign up for utilities on your own. For internet, it's really important you know like how much bandwidth you're getting, the speed and all that kind of stuff. I've seen instances where like they've signed up with a private landlord and they went out over their bandwidth by like 60 gigabytes. And Rogers charges like four or five dollars per uh, gigabyte sometimes. Sometimes two or three dollars, whatever it may be, you end up paying like 200 dollars extra on the internet. Just because when you sign, you said that this was your cap and that was it. But most buildings nowadays give you unlimited internet and they give you internet ports in every single room. But so just make sure you ask as many questions as you can before you end up spending a lot more money. Um, no, a lot of places, especially houses, might not come with air conditioning and all that kind of stuff, so it's really good to make sure you take, it, take that all into consideration. Um, next, look at amenities. So, some buildings might not have laundry, especially if you don't go home that much, or you're an international student, or you want to do your laundry every week, you're going to end up having to walk to like a laundry mat, or go to a building next door, or whatever. Or you want to know if you have a car, if, is parking involved, is there a gym? Uh, what else? What else is available to you? A lot of buildings nowadays, especially like uh, the newer buildings, have like uh, pool tables, games rooms. You can sign out like a TV room. They have like some of them even have saunas and pools and stuff. So that really helps in subletting, and it all depends on what your preference is. Do you want to budget yourself and you're only there to live with your friends or just get school done, or do you want to live in luxury? What do you want? So it's really important to know exactly what's included. Uh, in your rent and uh, make sure that you get it once your lease starts um, and then if you all that then basically the last step is just make sure that you cooperative cooperative with your roommates it's really important that you know you act mature when you're in student housing because you're really like on your own this is your first time where you move from living in your uh, under your parents roof to living on res but you no longer have dons you no longer have meal plans so it's really important that you guys um, come to like some rules, some agreements ahead of time, saying that like, look, we'll take out the garbage like every like two Wednesdays, or we'll wash the washrooms like every single like Sunday, or whatever it may be. It makes it a lot easier for you to live, and you'll realize that as it goes on, you'll actually maintain the place. You'll maintain how nice it is, maintain you know no damages or whatever, because most landlords, if not all of them, will do inspections. They might do it like every four months. They might do it every eight. They might only do it once a year. But they all have pictures, and I've done this myself. I've taken pictures before people have moved in, and then I've taken pictures after they moved out. And then I've charged them hundreds, thousands of dollars sometimes for damage that they've done. Broken glass, broken doors, had a party and trashed the place, right? So it's really important that you take care of it because you have to remember, yeah, this is your house, but someone else owns it. So you're liable for all the damages you do. You're liable for anything you do, basically. And the, and the landlord can well can easily come after you and say, look, these are the pictures that when you moved in, and now look what, look at the damage and look what you've done. And they can send you a bill saying this is how much it is to fix it, and it's really, really hard to get out of that, and they can take you to a small claims court. And you don't want to get through that, ruin your credit, and just it's a bunch of mess, so really good, take good care of your places and make sure that who you live with, they understand that you know if you're going to take care of it, they're going to take care of it. Just have respect for your places. Uh, the next is know your rights as tenants. So a lot of the times I've heard of like so many cases where students have been taken advantage of. For example, they'll ask you for a key deposit. Okay, most most landlords ask you for a key deposit. They can't legally hold that key deposit from you, 
if you damage the apartment, because it's a separate issue. So a lot of the times I've seen students uh, talk about how they put down a two, three hundred dollar key deposit. Okay, there's a small like mark on their wall or whatever it may be. They go in to get their key deposit and they say, "Oh, there's damages. You're not. You have to pay for these damages first, and then we'll give you a full refund for your key deposit." It's completely illegal. But you you might not expect it because you'll be like, "Yeah, that makes sense. You put down a deposit." I'm gonna get it back once all my damages are done. That's not the case. Once you actually give back your keys and your laundry card if you have one, they have to give you back your key deposit. And just tell them upfront, like listen, I know my rights. It's not legal for you to hold my key deposit because of damages, it's a separate issue. And they'll, and they'll just give you your key deposit upfront. If not, then you can go after them. Okay, I've seen that happen many times. Um, security and landlord relations. A landlord can't just simply walk into your room. Okay, that's really important. Like, uh, even Don's, you see that they knock on your door to do inspections and stuff? They always have to knock. Like, it's actually legal that they have to knock on their door and, and show who they are, and then you can let them in. You can refuse that, you can refuse entry to your landlords or to whoever it may be if you haven't given 24 hour notice of them coming in. Unless it's an emergency like fire, no heating, or if you call for like maintenance. Otherwise, they can't come into your room if you don't want them to. Okay? So it's really important because a lot of times landlords will come in to do showings at like 10 a.m. sometimes because it fits their schedule but not yours. They might not even tell you. They'll just walk in, they'll be sleeping, and they'll just be showing the room. Right? So it's really important that you know your rights. There's a lot, a lot more um, rights you guys have as tenants. It's just like they can't increase the rent price on you during the year. And there's a lot of variety of things. So when we have like the question and answer period, like if you guys have any questions, we'll go through those. And then uh, disputes. So if you have like a dispute between like a landlord and a tenant where you sign a lease and they promise that shoveling will be done every single day and that air conditioning will be provided. You move in and the landlord doesn't shovel much, you don't get air conditioning, whatever. You can fight as much as you want and say like, look, this is the case, whatever, whatever. But if it comes to a point where, excuse me, they just don't care, you can take them to the landlord and tenant board. It's basically um, an initiative set up by the government that basically controls landlords and their ability to control your rent money and to increase rent prices and how they should treat you. And you can just put in a claim, I think it's like $150 to file um, a dispute, and then you can actually report your landlord and then the city will get into touch with you and go through the whole process of trying to resolve the issue for you. It's an extreme, but at least you know that it's out there in case it happens. Now we're just going to look through a bunch of resources that are available for you. So the off-campus housing Waterloo site. Okay, so the University of Waterloo has an off-campus off -campus housing website. Um, basically, they, uh, Waterloo has like uh, some initiatives like uh, WCRI, which is like a cooperative right on Phillip, like right, literally like two minutes away from DC. And they also have uh, another building, uh, just like a 30 second walk away from Burger King. So those are the options that Waterloo offers you, aside from living on res, which you can as an upper year student. By all means, you can live at um, live on res. A lot of, a lot of uh, upper years choose to, if they want like security, they want a meal plan, they really just want to stay on campus for the added comfort, they'll just stay in res. But it is really expensive, but if that's what you're looking for, then it suits you. Um, Oh wait, you guys can't even see it, eh? It's showing me on my screen. Sorry, one second. Okay, so this is this is the website right here. Okay, um, they also talk about like your rights all over, and they, you know, they have like a Twitter account, and they have a bunch of house fairs and people you can reach out to in case you have any questions about housing. Like today, there was a housing fair in uh, SLC. They were present along with all the other uh, landlord companies and management uh, property management companies. Um, they also have an off-campus listing um, where when you're trying to sublet, you can actually put your place on this and a lot of people have found uh, sublets off. So as you can see, it has um, student classifieds free to all students, so you can post free of charge and try and sublet your place or try and transfer a lease if you decide last minute after signing that you don't want to live there. So we'll just go through uh, one of the listings. Oh, 
Okay, so for example, um, this is this thing. Uh, 52 Nowaker Street, and it tells you right there, Ofako Property Management Group. So right away you know that it's not uh, run by a private landlord, it's run by a property management company. So there's one bonus right there. And then next it tells you the price per month, um, the minimum lease, so you can see right away that's a four month lease. So that might be perfect for after you sign a one year lease, you come back just for four months on a co-op term, or you know that after your school term you're heading back on co-op, this might be ideal for you, right? Because you can sign a four month lease, and then after you're gone from campus, wherever you go, you don't have to worry about finding a sublet or all that kind of stuff, right? And it tells you the vacancies and stuff, preferred gender. A lot of the times, there'll be something called like girl power or like locked in girl or whatever, maybe your girl only. Uh, this just refers to like their way of saying that if a guy wants to sublet a room to that girl, that the girl's not allowed to sublet it to that guy. And, right? and it works for both genders, it's just more common to see it for girls. That way, if, um, let's say Elise, for example, moved into a place with four other girls, okay? And when she was signing the lease, the property management company said, we know you're living with randoms, but um, the all girls effect is included. And the, the, the roommate next to her is going off on co-op for four months. And she has, she's really desperate and she finally finds someone to sublet her room, happens to be a guy. If Elise or any of, the, any, any of the other roommates don't agree and say, no, I don't want to live with the guy, that girl doesn't have the right to sublet to that person. Okay, but you have to make sure that that's in your lease and that's talked about before you actually move in and before you sign anything. But it's an added comfort, especially for girls, especially if they know that their friends are gonna be subletting and they're staying and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so here right away you can see that it's five bedroom, shared with others uh, in the common area, meaning that the responsibility of the kitchen, the living room, um, all that kind of stuff, hallways, whatever, is shared amongst all of you. So a lot of the times you'll see that people will share washrooms, okay? And let's say three people are sharing a washroom, and one of the, first, one of the uh, tenants is really disruptive. He likes to damage things, he doesn't care, leaves it dirty, whatever. Lease is up, he doesn't want to clean. And you tell yourself, well, I haven't done any of this mess, I haven't done anything wrong, like why should I be the one who cleans or fixes the damages? The landlord will come in and see the damages, he won't charge that guy. He'll take the total cost, or she will take the total cost, and spend it amongst all three of you. Because in your lease, and they, they tell you that all the common spaces are liable for all of you. You can tell the landlord they know it was only him, whatever, but if you can't like actually prove it, then you're gonna end up paying for that other person's damages with him. So that's why it's really important to like have respect for your uh, houses, know who you're living with, and all that kind of stuff. And then it says, utilities included, shared bathroom, parking extra, laundry extra. So make sure you look through all that, know what you're getting yourself into, read the fine print, because you can see here that a dishwasher is included, and then and two fridges and the stove and everything. Make use of that. If utilities are included, why not make use of dishwasher? Why not make total use of the fridges? If utilities weren't included, then yeah, be conscious of how much you're doing it because you're gonna end up having to pay for it. So really know what kind of situation you're in. So Laurier, Hayes, Laurier kind of has the same exact thing as Waterloo. Um, their properties are just mainly around Laurier and so a lot more houses. And they also have like a sublet board and they let you to, um, they allow you to post ads on there. And you can also find housing on there. Landlords will post their houses and stuff like that. Um, there's various property management groups that we'll go through later. Um, Kijiji is a really good tool too. Not only to post, but also to find places. Most landlords will post on Kijiji. They'll post like uh, contact information if you like the place, want to book a tour. They'll tell you all the information. Um, and then there's also the landlord antenna board which uh, we'll go to right now that I spoke to, I spoke about before. Does anyone have any questions right now or anything? No, we're good. Okay, so this is the line on the antenna board. No, I don't expect anyone to go through the entire act, like it's a huge government document, uh, tons of pages, a lot of like uh, legal language, but it's important to know that it's there. In case you get scammed out of your rent or you get promised something you're not, and the landlord just doesn't care, or doesn't respond to your calls, has your money, whatever, this is your go-to, okay? This is like basically the, the cops of housing 
that can help you settle a dispute and make sure that whatever you're trying to resolve with your landlord gets resolved. Okay, it's just a matter of calling them, um, going through the procedure of how to file a complaint, paying the application fee, and then they'll go through everything and make sure that based off your case, if you're right, they'll see whatever they can do. If it goes to court, it goes to court. If not, then good, they'll get it resolved earlier. Um, for example, like one situation that um, I heard about a few months ago, uh, a group of five girls moved into this house. They each put in about $500 deposit, and most landlords will ask you for first month and last month's rent. And they're allowed to do that. That's just so they know you don't sign a place, and then the day before you're supposed to move in, you cancel. Because now that landlord is out thousands of dollars in rent, right? So you have to usually put a first month and last month deposit. So these people, they put a first month and last month deposit in, and when they went to go see the place, they were promised that X, Y, and Z were going to be fixed. Um, the bedrooms would get repainted. Um, they found some mold on the floor. They said that it would get removed, and etc. Right? They move in. Nothing's done. There's still mold on the floor. There's like loose nails. The heater's not working. All this stuff. They message the landlord, call, try and do whatever they can. Email, go visit the landlord's office. No one's willing to help them. And if you think about it, five people. $500 deposit for first and last months. So they're each putting down, each putting down $1,000. Okay, so that's $5,000 the landlord already has of your money. Okay, they usually don't cash it in till you move in. They'll cash, uh, I, think, I think it's first month's rent, and they'll wait till last month's rent. You just don't have to pay that month. But they still have your checks, or, or they still have your cash, no matter, uh, regardless of how you pay, they still have it, right? And they just, they just wouldn't reply. And this is already the first week of school. So imagine, you have class all day, assignments start, midterm start, and you have no place to live, or you have a place to live, it's just really unsafe, there's mold and stuff, which is hazardous to your health, and no one's helping you, right? So they had to go to the landlord and tenant board. The landlord and tenant board then actually found out that the, yeah, the, the, the safety of the tenants and the condition of the house wasn't up to the standards that it should be. Things like mold and stuff is taken very, very seriously, and they ended up getting half their deposit back and getting out of the lease and being able to move into a new place, brand new, okay? So yeah, they didn't get their full money back, but think about it, they got half their money back, okay? The stress is over, and they got out of their lease, and now they're, moving, they're able to move into a new place, right? Start fresh, and they learn from their mistakes, right? So it's really important that you uh, know your resources and you know the kind of things that you can go to in case stuff happens. And um, I can't, I have to log in for this, but on Facebook, Facebook is probably like one of the best tools right now for finding sublets or finding places to live. There's two groups right now that I know of, and uh, if you talk to me afterwards, I'll, I'll give you the link or I'll invite you to the group. It's really good because students posting for students, right? You message them on Facebook, everyone goes on Facebook constantly throughout, throughout the day, they'll reply to you instantly. And at least you know who they are, you'll see if you have mutual friends with them, maybe you guys are in the same program. It's just a lot easier to just talk to students over Facebook. It's kind of like a personal relationship, and you guys can really trust them. And then the biggest thing is, you see a place you like on Facebook, you message the person, hey, um, I saw your place such and such, right? Can I come see it? It's a student who's trying to help you. They, right, so it's a win-win situation. Just go there, see the place, negotiate the rent if you have to, uh, take a tour of the room, take a tour of the bathroom and the, you know, the common spaces. And if you're going to live with randoms, maybe try and meet them ahead of time or ask them, are they up for your students? Are they quiet? How do they live? Are they outgoing? What is it, right? You really want to know what you're getting yourselves into. Okay, so that's basically like all the basics and everything that you really need to know um, for housing. Um, the, the, the biggest thing is just like getting uh, really informed about making a right decision because the last thing you want to do, it's only uh, the end of January. You're not moving in till probably September, right? The last thing you want to do is take the pressure from your parents or from your friends and impulsively sign a place. That's the worst thing you can do is out of the impulse, sign a place just because you want to get rid of the stress of not having a place for September because you're committing to a whole year and thousands of dollars of rent. So it's really important you're making a decision. Right, you guys put a lot of decision into what university you're gonna to go to. If you're gonna buy a new car, you put a lot of decision into it. Why? Because you're committing to something 
and you're putting thousands of dollars of rent. Like I can't emphasize that enough. It's really important that you know exactly where to rent, what to look for, and stuff. And right now, in my experience, a lot of the a lot of the houses, a lot of the buildings are going really quickly. Yes, but there's always going to be availability. Even come August, there will be availability. There always is, because there's so much development in Waterloo. There's so many houses, so many apartments that you don't necessarily have to look right now if you don't want to, or you're not finding what exactly what you want. You know, if you wait a few months, the prices will go down. The lease, the lease lengths will go down. I've seen cases where, uh, I don't know if you guys heard of Lux, but for example, it's a beautiful building um, right next to the McDonald's at King and Columbia. A great building, has uh, you know multiple gyms, game rooms. We've had some Melissa events there. You know, it's a really nice building. Like I said before, seven hundred dollars rent. You get that for four hundred dollars. I've seen people have signed eight month leases there for like six hundred dollars for fall and winter, which are the most expensive terms. Why? Because they signed in August, they signed in July, when landlords come to a point where they just want to get rid of their rooms and fill their occupancy. So they will try and accommodate you later on as it goes by. So don't stress if you don't have a place right now, there's still many months to go. It's really good to be proactive and like make sure that you know, you're looking ahead and know what you want, know which roommates you're going to live for. But as of now, if you don't have a place, you shouldn't be stressed. There's literally like almost like 200 like places in Waterloo I can think of on the top of my head. Literally, I could tell you though that you can rent. There is 15 different property management companies that you can go to who each have their own set of buildings, each have their own set of houses. Okay, there's more housing than there are students in Waterloo. That's why there's so much competition. That's why you know you'll see that they're willing to do eight month rent. They're willing to give you utilities included. They're willing to give you cash backs, right? For example. I refer to Domus because I work there, obviously, but um, they give cashbacks, and uh, there's there's like premiums right, uh, sorry, promos right now that sign now with your group of five, and will give you three hundred dollars cash back from her, from your lease, right? Um, I've seen things where uh, like uh, KW for rent. I've heard that you sign a lease and they'll give you one month free, if not one month free, sometimes two months free rent. You're saving like a thousand dollars there, right? So it's really good to know what deals are upcoming. I mean, if you find a place you like really like right now, it works in your budget, it works for you and your roommates, and it's the right location, then yeah, by all means, go for it, sign the lease, um, you know, just be informed, and that way at least that come September, you're um, basically informed and you know exactly that during the summer when you're out of Waterloo, you know, when you come back, you have a place to go to and you're perfectly fine with it. So that's everything I have to say. Um, I hope you guys um, learned a lot about like what to look for, how to look, and all that stuff. There's tons and tons of resources. Uh, during the question and answer, if you want me to show you something specific, or you want me to run through a building with you, by all means, okay? So we'll just have like questions and answers if anyone has any specific questions. Yeah, what's up? Can you do the presentation again? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want hockey, yeah, I, I would do it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, ask as many questions as you guys want. I, I know you maybe ask. you guys are shy or not, or you don't know what to ask. But if anyone has any kind of questions or anything, we're good? All right. Thank you, Nadam. No worries. Love you.